Welcome to the simple, safe, solar, step-by-step -step instructional video. I'm not going to spend too much time convincing you of the benefits of solar energy independence. You already know the benefits. That's why you purchased this video. What you're looking for now is for someone to show you how to do it for yourself in an inexpensive and safe way. And that is exactly what I'm going to do. Let me explain why I'm making this instructional video. I'm an electronics engineer and for a number of years now I have been working on portable solar energy systems for the Marines and the Army. One day I realized there was no good reason why the average do-it-yourselfer couldn't afford or didn't have the skills to build a simple, safe, backup solar power system for their own home. If you are a do-it-yourselfer, have lots of sunny days throughout the year, and you are willing to conserve as much electricity as possible during a power outage, then this step-by-step -step video is for you. First, before we start building our system, we need to explore the potential solar resources on your property. I don't know what your property looks like, but I can help you find the best place for your solar panels. Some of you might be asking, why can't I just put the panels on my roof? Well, you can, but it's more complicated expensive and it requires more technical skill and not everyone has a roof that faces south look at my roof for instance it doesn't face south not a great place for solar panels even if you have a nice south facing roof many do-it-yourself type people would find that mounting solar panels on a roof is a daunting task so for the purposes of this video we are only going to explore the one solar resource that almost every homeowner has, and that is a backyard. Yes, a backyard. And here is mine. And those are my solar panels that I mounted to my kid's playhouse. Where are you going to put your solar panels? I chose to put mine on the kid's playhouse. Why? Well first, the playhouse roof faces south. Secondly, this corner of the yard has an excellent view of the sun all day long. And there aren't any trees or patio overhangs in the way. Finally, the playhouse roof has a good slope to it. Not too steep, not too flat. Okay, now let me help you decide where to put your solar panel. Step one, find a corner of your backyard that has a good southern view of the sun for most of the day. Remember, the sun rises in the east and sets in the west. So if you face your solar panel south, then they will have a good view of the sun no matter where it is in the sky. Step two, make sure there isn't anything casting a shadow on your solar panel. This will decrease their efficiency. Finally, step three. You're going to need a structure to mount your panels to. This is where I can't help you a whole lot because I don't know what you've got in your backyard. Maybe you have a shed like most of my neighbors do. Most general purpose sheds like these have a good medium sloping roof and can be moved to any corner of the yard without much trouble. If you really don't have any options, here's one idea. If you have ever built or repaired a wooden fence before, then you should have no trouble building a mounting frame for your solar panels. And remember, don't build your mounting frame until you have your solar panels. You need the dimensions of your panels in order to get the spacing right for the four posts. We will cover the selection and purchase of your solar panels in the next section. Once you have selected the perfect spot for your panels, dig four holes, mix up your cement, and set your posts. Again, the spacing of the posts will be determined by the width and length of your solar panels. Next, secure two cross beams as shown in the illustration. You probably want to drill a hole through each cross beam corner and all the way through the post. Then you can use a large enough bolt to hold the weight of the panels. Notice also that you want to secure the two cross beams at a slope, meaning the back end is higher off the ground than the front end. If your home is somewhere in the lower half of the United States, then you want the slope to be somewhere between a, a 30 or 40 degree angle. Again, in the next section I will cover this in more detail. 
Next, secure two more cross beams as shown. Finally, attach your solar panels. And make sure you cut the two front posts down so they don't cast a shadow on the panels. One great thing about this design is that you can actually adjust the slope of the solar panels so that they are at a higher slope during the winter and almost flat during the summer. I know there are details I didn't cover like using treated lumber, how deep to dig the holes, or the size of bolts. These details are outside the scope of this instructional video. However, I wanted to at least give you one idea in order to get your creative wheel started. Now that you've picked out a corner of the yard for the solar panels and you've identified a sturdy mounting structure, let's get down on the ground and start talking about how to get them mounted. Let's take a look at how I mounted my solar panels to the kids' playhouse. Again, I can't show you exactly how to mount your solar panels, but I can show you how I did it, and then you can take it from there. Most solar panels come with mounting holes already drilled through the frame. I used a galvanized bolt, washer, lock washer, and nut to secure my panels to the wood frame. If you're like me, you may want to drill a couple extra mounting holes in your solar panel frame just so your panels don't fly off your mounting structure in a big windstorm. If you do drill extra mounting holes in your solar panel frame, remember to put a piece of scrap plywood on the back side of the panel directly on the other side of your drill bit when you're drilling. This is to ensure that you don't poke through with the drill bit and accidentally damage the bottom of your panel. And your panel should have at least two mounting holes that have the ground symbol next to them. We're going to cover how to properly ground your panels in a later section. However, you will want to drill out the diameter of one of the ground mounting holes on each of the solar panels so that we can use the standard quarter inch bolt to secure down the terminal lug to the solar panel frame. First, I built a simple square frame with some 2x4s and some galvanized wood screws. Of course, I measured the dimensions of my two solar panels first and then built my square frame using those dimensions. Then I mounted the frame to the kids' playhouse using the galvanized wood screws. With the frame in place, I slid the panels into place and had someone hold down the panels to keep them from slipping while I took a sharpie and marked the frame through the mounting holes on the solar panels. Then I took the panels back down and drilled holes through the frame where I had marked with the sharpie. Finally, I slid the panels back into place on the frame and used a handful of galvanized bolts nuts and washers to secure the solar panels to the frame. Notice, I did countersink my holes so that the bolt heads would not be sticking out of the frame. Another important note, make sure you position the solar panels on your mounting frame so that the positive and negative cables coming from both panels are on the same side. If you don't do this, then you won't be able to connect to the combiner box later on. Now let me discuss how to find the best angle from the horizon at which your panels should be tilted. First, go on the web or find your world atlas and determine your latitude. If your latitude is between 25 and 50 degrees, then you can use the following formula to calculate your solar panel tilt angle. Take your latitude times 0 0.76 plus 3.1 degrees. For example, if you live in the high desert of California, then your latitude may be 35 degrees. That means the best fixed tilt angle for your panels would be 35 times 0 0.76 plus 3.1 equals a 30 degree tilt angle. Now here is where my experience differs from the formula. I would recommend increasing your tilt angle by 6 or 7 degrees in order to bias your solar panels for the winter months when the sun is lower on the horizon. Yes, your panels will be less efficient during the summer when the sun is directly overhead, but you have a lot more sun during the summer months, so your solar panels will still be providing plenty of power. During the winter, you have fewer hours of sunlight, 
So by increasing the tilt angle of your panels, your panels will give you more power even though they have less sun hours during the day. Let me show you a quick way to do your fixed tilt angle measurement using just an 8.5 by 11 piece of paper. First, starting in the upper left hand corner, fold the paper until the bottom is even. That gives us a 45 degree angle right here. Now grab this corner and fold it up to this point. That's 22 and a half degrees. And then we're going to fold it back. 45 plus 22.5 is 67.5. So that's the angle we have here. And now we're simply going to fold this 67.5 degree angle in half again. We'll call the 67.5 68, so if we divide that in half, like we just did, we get 34 degrees. So now we can use this piece of paper to get a rough estimate as to our solar panel fixed tilt angle. One more thing to keep in mind when deciding where and how to mount your solar panels. The more airflow you have underneath the panels, the more efficiently they will operate. Keep this in mind when designing your structure. You should have enough information now to successfully select a location for your solar panels and then get them securely mounted to a structure. Next, let's make sure you know exactly what solar panels to buy. There are many companies that sell solar panels. After quite a bit of market research, I settled with Sun Electronics. They are a solar panel clearinghouse which means they are constantly buying solar panels in bulk and then reselling them at very discount prices. I spent a couple of weeks constantly checking the inventory on their website and calling their distribution centers until I found the panels I wanted for a pretty good price. Also, I primarily worked with the Phoenix Center to find my panels because they were the nearest location to my home and it would cost the least in freight shipping compared to the other distribution centers. Basically, you will probably want to find your panels in the same way I did. Go to the Sun Electronics website or any other discount solar panel clearinghouse that you find and browse their solar panel inventory. Look for solar panels that are in the 205 to 230 watt range. Here is an example of one that I recently found on the Sun Electronics website. Let's select the 205 watt panel because it is the cheapest per watt at $1.14. Another window will open and we'll see the solar panel data sheet. Focus on the standard test conditions section. And we want to verify that the minimum power is 205 watts. The voltage or the VMPP is in the 28 volt range, which it is, and finally we'll just glance at the current. It should be above 7 amps, which it is as well. Now we need to check one more thing. We need to make sure that the connectors are the standard MC4 or SMK connectors. Sure enough, they are SMK. The solar panel combiner box has MC4 connectors. So as long as our panels have MC4 or SMK connectors, then our panels will be compatible with the solar panel combiner box. Now, go buy your solar panels and get them mounted. This concludes the solar panel section of the DVD. Return to the main menu and select the next instructional video, How to Wire Up Your System.